Hi everybody. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I put out a post uh, on um, uh, the Facebook page and I just mentioned that perhaps I could um, share my experience in China and my time manufacturing product up there and uh, maybe help some people avoid some pitfalls and navigate some of the issues they might be facing uh, with manufacturing. And I got flooded with the response. So I first have to say, I never imagined that. I've never made a video like this before, but I thought maybe it was time. I have a lot of experience to share and I often talk to friends about it, but I really haven't sort of put it all out there but it's hard for me to hear stories of people losing money because of mistakes they might have made that they didn't understand what was actually happening in China and I know a lot of entrepreneurs like myself we have a budget and we have to be careful how we spend our money so that we can build our brand and so I thought uh, this is maybe a good time I, I spent nine years living in China I still have an office there um, but uh, maybe I should first start with who I am. My name is Kim McQueen, and I, uh, like I said, I'm an entrepreneur like everyone else out there. Uh, I've spent the last 15 years working on the Curves uh, exercise uh, for women brand, and um, in that time of doing that business, uh, we found ourselves, my husband and I, as master licensees of different markets throughout Asia, which means that we have to, uh, just like any business, we have to start from the ground up and we have to produce products and we have to run a business um, and, and sort of navigate how to do that from country to country and, and modify what we do a little bit. And um, I thought, wow, now we're in China. I sh this should be really easy to make products. This will be great. And um, it really was much more challenging than I ever dreamed it was going to be. My background uh, prior to Curves was I was a creative director in advertising. So this was an opportunity for me to sort of take some of that design flair and put it against, you know, making product. And I really did learn a lot. Uh, it, was, it was an amazing time. Um, but I, I was a bit surprised, I guess, at some of the challenges that I encountered. So if I can just start with that first, I will definitely go into that. But as I worked on you know, what to put together and what to talk about, it occurred to me that this is quite a, a big story. There's a lot of you on, um, in the Facebook group, which I have to say is incredibly inspiring. And I just love to see all these women out there doing business. It's uh, exciting. I was often called a feminist when I was in China, but I guess maybe I am. I really love to see women thrive and you know make their dreams a, a reality. Um, so anyhow, I've really enjoyed seeing all that, and several of you have already contacted me, which is is amazing and incredible. Um, but it, it, it occurred to me that really there is so many different things I could talk about, and some of the people who contacted me have a lot of experience producing things in China. Some don't have very much experience, so where should I really start? So I thought, you know, this video is really basically an introduction to who I am and a little bit about what I know, but I thought I'll make a series of videos going into more detail. And the detail could be things like, um, you know, when to digital print versus when to print a roll, or what kind of fabric works well for digital printing versus what kind of fabric does not work well, and I've had lots of experience in that area. Um, you know, those kind of subjects, or when we get into things that are plastics, for example, what do we have to look out for in plastics? Or how do we find a good factory to work with? Uh, how do we handle inspections? So all these things started coming up and I thought, wow, I, this is not gonna be a simple video to make. So first I just wanna start with some basic things. If you are new to producing things in China, um, let me just start with the very first thing. You need to get a really good sample of your product. So sometimes the factory you're working with can do that for you simply or you can have that done locally first and then send it to a factory to have it replicated from there. I can just say that the closer you have a product in your hand to exactly what you wanna produce, the easier the process in China is gonna be. Copying is much easier than a bespoke item. It doesn't mean that it can't happen. It just means with a bespoke item, you have to expect about four or five rounds of sampling. I've done that and I can tell you, sometimes you think I'm not gonna get the sample I want. This is gonna be impossible. 
possible, but um, you do get there. It just takes a little bit of time. When, you, when you're starting with something that you just wanna modify slightly, uh, perhaps it's a little faster, or if you wanna just change a pattern, for example, you maybe have a piece of clothing and I, I don't want it in this color, but I want this pattern, but I do want this fabric and I do want this cut, or I want this cut in a tiny change, that's all much faster. And so uh, the sample is sort of the first big hurdle you have to get past is getting that sample made that you want. And I can tell you a little bit about what happens when you are getting a sample made by a factory, there's usually a pretty big fee involved with that sample. And you know, um, th that's a really fair thing because on the factory side, they have no idea if you're gonna produce that product with them or if you're gonna take that sample and you've got another factory that you wanna have make it. And so they don't know. So they charge you a pretty big fee. You should get all of that back if you produce with, the, with that factory. However, if you go back to the factory and you know they made you a beautiful sample and then you say, okay, I wanna make 500 pieces, they might have a lot of other production to do that is gonna come in front of you. Maybe someone's got 10,000 or 5,000 or 20,000 of something. So if you just have 500, even though you're gonna pay more and all of that, they really have to serve the people who have the biggest orders first. So I was often at the back of the line when I first started, which then kind of pushed us into making our own factory because I, I was gonna be small for a while until it became much bigger. And so I had to find a solution to that. and. Uh, it's not the easiest solution to decide to go ahead and, and, and build a factory, but that's basically what we had to do because we were there for quite a while. But anyway, what happens is um, you're gonna pay a pretty big fee for your sample, and then once you have that sample, at that point, you can pretty much do what you want. You can use that factory or you can go to another factory. One of the things I want to sort of caution everyone against is when you contact a factory on AliExpress or Alibaba or through someone else, try to, um, try to know, it's gonna be difficult to know, but try to know whether or not you're really talking to the factory. Uh, most of the time, you're actually talking to a broker. Even when they say they are from the factory, they are representing a factory. So what I have heard stories of, and I, I pretty much knew exactly what was happening, is you get this beautiful sample and you think, wow, this is great. Okay, let's go ahead and make 800 of these. And then the broker is stuck, because he's a middleman, he's stuck going, okay, that factory that made that sample is a really exceptional factory, and that's how I get a really great sample. But now I've got to find another factory that's willing to just do 800. Well, probably their skill is not as good as the factory that made your sample. So this is where that, I don't want to call it bait and switch, because it's not really that. He's got to make money too. Bigger factories who are better at what they do uh, can make beautiful samples. He can win your business that way, but he isn't always going to be taking your product back to that factory. And that's not meant to say that they're bad people or anything like that. It just means that bigger factories who make better product have a lot of people producing product with them. So he's going to find someone else to manufacture your product and he's still going to make his margin in there because he also has to earn money and your product might not be the same. And so then people say, well, I'll have it inspected and that'll definitely protect me. But inspection is really just, they open a box, they'll check a couple of pieces. If you can't really afford to have one piece come back with a problem, then you need to make sure that you have full inspection. And so sometimes a factory will do that on the floor. Um, sometimes uh, a factory is going to need, sorry, my, there we go. Sometimes a factory is going to need to have um, an outside, you're going to need to have an outside inspector come into that factory because maybe you're not sure if that's going to be enough of an inspection. And the other thing is, uh, I think one of the things I learned, which was really just amazing, is that there are, products are going to have a default. Not every single product is going to be perfect. So you need to, within your budget, sort of plan for some defaults or some irregulars to come through. So for example, uh, clothing can be sometimes up to 10%, which I, I had no idea. I was really kind of surprised to hear that. But if you think of all the different stages clothing goes to, it goes through, it'll get inspected on the floor, it might get inspected by a third party, and then it's gonna go uh, to the retail, and then once it goes out on the floor, retail might check a few, you know, and find a few irregular, irregulars there too. So, you know, you've got many layers of people who might be able to catch stuff before it goes to the end consumer. But if you have something that's gonna go straight 
somewhere where it needs to be sold, you need to have some level of security that you are really getting a product that has been inspected to your standard. And so we actually, um, we had to work hard at this area because we had franchisees to satisfy and we couldn't have anything go wrong because when you have a lot of different franchisees you have a lot of different people coming at you if you have one or two problems we were able to get ours down to less than one percent which i was really proud of that number it, it is exceptional um anyhow so you know these are some of the things to kind of think about because you don't want to have a whole bunch of products shipped here for example and 70 percent of the product has some sort of fault uh, then you, you might have to start all over again, and that's sort of the reality of business. You have to start all over again. So when you're, when you're managing your budget, just account for some of these things. Um, and the other thing is test your product. When you get your sample, you really need to test that. Test it hard. Do everything that you could possibly imagine would happen to that product so that you can be comfortable with saying, okay, did we check this? Did we check that seam? Do we check, it? you know, is it waterproof? Is it, how deep can we go in the water? This kind of stuff. So if I can just start with that, I'm just gonna start with the importance of the sample and knowing that when you're talking to someone who says they're from a factory, there's a good chance they're actually a broker. Uh, and that, that's not a bad thing. It's just that you need to know that that's, that's the reality and that's why sometimes the sample isn't the same as the product that you get. So what I did is I put together a very small sort of sampling of things in here and I thought, wow, I could take each one of these and I could do a story. So if if you think that's useful, I'm ready to go now. <laughs> these are my first videos. So I, I thought, okay, I could just go ahead and do this and just talk. So like, um, let me just give you a little bit of an idea and then you guys can comment and tell me if this is sort of ticking the box for you or not or what kind of things you're interested in and I'll do my best to answer those questions. But this is an example of something uh, that was digitally printed. And you know, one of the things I can say is if you're manufacturing clothing of any kind, your IP really rests in the pattern that you make. Anybody can do a cut. Um, anybody can copy a cut, but your pattern is where you really, so we, we designed this pattern ourselves, but this is what you really own. This is your pattern. You can also buy patterns, but you know, it's great to be able to design your own. Um, this is an example of like, we did water bottles. I, we, I think one year alone, I had 300 different unique products with, you know, I mean, it's, we have a lot of product. I don't think that a lot of the other, if you're familiar with Curves here, I don't think they have quite as many products as we do, but we have a lot of product that we give away um, in the different countries in Asia. So like for example, with this water bottle, um, this had to be BPA free, but we also had to test that it wouldn't leak. Um, we had to test how, how high you could drop it before it might crack or break. And you know, there were a lot of different things we had to go through when we made a product like this. Um, we also made plush toys, um, so that was kind of a fun little project. That was a pretty easy one to do. We made reversible bags, so bags that could go inside out and uh, had applique and different things. Um, slippers, oh, I've got um, some technology things. This is a cooling uh, towel, so if you use this towel and you snap it, it gets really cold, and so we've got things like that. We did a little bit of uh, makeup, so we had some lip glosses, and I think I have, oh, here, I dropped it right here. I've got, um, we had some jewelry. And you know, I would say that if you're making something special or you're using some sort of special finish or, you know, beading or something like that, you definitely want to mark it. So this was, uh, this was made almost five years ago and it's, it's quite pretty. I mean, it's, um, it's a nine to five silver and it's got little quartz crystals and it was really beautifully made. Not, not really expensive, but just a really nice product. Um, we made towels and hats and I had, oh, I know, I had some technology, so we've done some headphones and things like that. We also did uh, some other types of water bottles, like some thermal, thermal style water bottles. So I've got a lot of different things I could talk about, hats, gloves, I mean, you name it, I, outside of maybe furniture, although I did do some furniture production of my own. <laughs> there, I did just about everything while I was there. So I'm happy to share some of that with you and hopefully I can I can help uh, help uh, some of the ladies out there and, and I don't know if, if there's any uh, husbands involved, but help you not lose any money and um, make a great product. And the last bit I'll leave you with is that, um, you know, I had a great experience in China. I made a lot of really good friends and 
Uh, it was years and years before I even decided to go to a trade show. I, I was just too busy making my products, so don't feel like you have to go to a trade show to make sure you've got it all figured out. Um, you really don't. If you've got to keep your budget tight and you want to stay focused, it's completely doable. But the other thing I would say is that I met a lot of nice people. Uh, they're just like us. They, they, they have families uh, that they go to home to at night. They want to do a good job. And I tried to give them as much constructive feedback as I could, but also I thanked them when they did a great job. And I really wanted everybody to know that I, I noticed how great this came out or I just appreciated that extra effort. And, you know, I believe in loyalty. I'm, I'm, I'm very committed to that even when I was in advertising my photographers and illustrators I worked with I worked with them all the time if they did a great job for me and the client was happy and the whole project was great then I gave them more business and I did the exact same in China I just wanted to develop a relationship and from that relationship you know there's give and take and we can work together and grow together but you know at the end of the day we all want to have a good time we, we don't want to not enjoy what we do some of you are working on your live stream and you know, you want that to be fun. You don't want that to be um, a challenging experience. So I would just say, you know, reach out and develop those relationships and know that people make mistakes on both sides. But in the end, if everybody's committed to the goal, then I, I truly believe that they really want um, you to be happy with the work that they produce. And um, anyhow, so I'll just leave it at that. That's just a little bit. And um, I guess, let me know what kind of what kind of things I could maybe talk about or what kind of questions you have. Uh, I, there was a lot of people who kind of came through and said a lot of things. It was sort of hard for me to keep up. But I was thinking I'll put this on a YouTube channel and then maybe I can answer questions like that or, or maybe I need to make a separate Facebook page or I'm not sure yet. But I, I'll just do the best I can to um, put the information I have out there and uh, help as many people as I can. So anyway, I uh, hope you're all having a nice day. It's finally not raining here. And uh, I, I finally got this video done. So um, good luck to everybody. And I wish you all the, the best. And just, you know, I really believe if you just go for it, you can do it. So anyway, I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Bye.